It all starts with intention. Whatever we want to create, however we want to live, what kind of business we want to build, it starts with our intention, right? Now, the thing about intention is that some people think, well, I'm going to visualize the results, right? Like, oh, I have a six-figure business. I have uh, all these clients. I have, um, you know, all the things that I could buy with, with the money that I make in my business, right? Typical law of attraction, you've heard about that. Um, in, envisions results as if typically. But what I always uh, sort of like, maybe one of the core shifts I've made in how I approach my life and my work is to shift so much from visualizing results over to visualizing the process. If you learn one thing from me, maybe that's the one thing that you may want to take away because I apply that to everything that I do. So let's talk about how do we apply that in our marketing of our business. All right. So if you start to learn marketing and business, uh, typically you're going to see things like grow a six figure income, build a large audience, you know, get tons and tons of traffic. And it's all a means to an end, right? Like you don't, it's not that you really want the money. You want what the money can do in your life and the money eventually, yes, it can buy you things. It give you shelter, give you security, give you pleasure, uh, give you ab ability to donate and, and create, but ultimately it all comes down to what we actually want, which is the peace of mind. What we actually want is the joy in our daily life. What we actually want is the fulfillment that we experience when we grow. Like that's what we actually want. We don't actually need the money per se. We don't, a more clear example. Oh, build a large audience. Nobody really wants a large audience. It just gives us more emails to respond to, right? Like what we actually want is the feeling that we are making an impact, a positive transformation on others. That's what we really want. It's the feeling of making a positive, right? Like who cares if we have a big audience or a small audience? It's like, if I feel like I'm making a difference, if I feel like I'm on purpose in my life, then that's really what we are after, aren't we? Or do we want a big audience? And for what reason, right? Or, you know, get lots of traffic to your website. None of us, none of us want traffic to our website, right? It's, we want the attention, which then allows us to do the work that we feel called to do to serve the transformation of others and to express the thing we're here to express, our soulful art, uh, our message, right? The peak experience you want to share that we hope others can achieve as well, or whatever it may be. So that's why it's so important to think about our intention in what we are visualizing, what we're really going after. We're not going after the traffic or the audience or even the money. We're going after the peace of mind and the joy of action and the fulfillment of growth. That's what we're really going after, right? So when we do our marketing, therefore, how can we apply this deeper principle? So, you know, like I said, when you start learning from other people, oh, they're, they're trying to, they try to tempt you with the shallow stuff, the, the cash, the cars, the, the audience, the traffic, whatever. But what I'm always encouraging you to go for is the deeper stuff. That's what I try to draw you forth is the deeper stuff. Because those of you watching this recognize that, yes, that's really what we want. So. To apply this to marketing means, means. So it means that we actually make marketing no longer a means to an end, but what if we made marketing, the things we do every day to grow our business, what if we made those things an end in itself? What if those actions of writing an email, of making a video, of preparing a webinar, of writing a sales page, what if those actions themselves were actually joyful and worthwhile activity 
rather than I better do this begrudgingly or I better do this as a chore or I better do this because I'm supposed to do it so that one day I will have clients that I can serve and really feel, feel, fulfill my calling and, and express my purpose and all that. What if the actual writing of the email, what if the actual making of the video, what if the actual blog writing, what if the actual, um, you know, creating the sales page was itself a worthwhile activity? Then every day is worthwhile rather than waiting for the day that is finally worthwhile where, oh, well, I'll have clients and I'd love to. Serve. So that's what my challenge to you and my encouragement to you today is. Can you make whatever you're doing today for to grow your business, so-called grow your business, can you make that activity itself worthwhile? So whatever it is you need to do to make it worthwhile, I don't know what you do, but for me, I do energy reboot. You can Google this George Cow energy reboot. I do my energy reboot. I breathe joy into the activity itself. I notice, oh, how is this activity allowing me to grow as a person, to grow in my virtues, to grow? How, how is it possible to express some love in this activity right now? Is it possible for me to, maybe it's, you know, every activity has its own virtue strength. Maybe this activity is not about love. Maybe it's, maybe it's about creativity. How can I tap, practice tapping my, my playfulness? Maybe this activity is about courage. How can I practice tapping my courage? But like every activity, maybe this activity is about patience. How can I use this activity to practice breathing into patience and into mindfulness, into um, in appreciating even the details, whatever it may be, every activity has a strength, has a blessing to it that fuels your growth, the growth that actually matters, the deeper growth, not the audience building and the client getting and the sales, of course. But here's the thing. If you are able to breathe virtue into the activity at hand, what happens is you feel fulfilled as you do that activity. It's like, ah, oh, yes, this is growing my courage. Ah, yes, this is growing my sense of play. Ah, yes, this is growing my appreciation of details, my learning how to appreciate the details or whatever it may be. Then if you do that, it's a practice every day of personal growth, right? So first of all, it's worthwhile for your eternal soul, okay? But secondly, you'll learn to enjoy that activity. It's worthwhile in itself and you'll learn to enjoy it because it feels fulfilling that you're growing and therefore you're more likely to do it more consistently. It's no longer a chore. It's no longer a means to an end, but it is itself worthwhile to an end. So then if you do it consistently, here's the ironic thing. If you do it consistently because you find the fulfillment in it, you do it consistently, you naturally get better at it. And then more naturally you get better at it, the better the results tend to be. So it's a funny thing is ultimately it does get you better results, but we're not doing it for the results. We're doing it for the activity and the personal growth within the moment right there. So I hope this is helpful. This is essentially, like I said, the, the, the core of how I approach all my business tasks. And be, that's why, I mean, that's why you, you see me show up consistently because I don't show up because, oh, I get to make more money or, I mean, it happens. Of course, money making happens, but it's like, I get to show up because how can I practice more virtue in this, in this hour today? Because that's what the other thing I, I'll leave you with, I'll leave you with is, is this idea that none of us know when we're leaving. You know, one of the, the reason why I changed my business so dramatically uh, back in 2014, 2013 was because I went through the spiritual transformation where I, I, I kept asking, I don't know why, but the question wouldn't leave me. And the question was, what if I had six months left to live? What if I had six months left to live? I don't know why it wouldn't leave me, but it wouldn't. And that made me reflect very deeply and say, my God, I don't want to be caught dead trying to send another email to make more sales. That's not what I, I, don't, want, I don't want to be caught dead trying to make a video to persuade people to buy or whatever. No, I, I, I want to be caught dead doing 
this thing with love or trying to bring more play into this moment. I want to be caught dead doing that. And we don't know when we're going to be caught dead, but we know that we can bring that deeper, authentic presence into this moment. And if we do, I mean, I'm grateful that essentially my life has become like heaven over the last five to seven years because of this continual practice. And because of this continual practice, I've gotten better and better and better at what I do, which tends to create better results as well. You know, that my business is doing very well today and, and I have the, the experience of fulfillment that is really what I was after all along. So I hope this is helpful. I hope this is inspiring for you. I, uh, I wish you um, joy in practicing these things. So uh, as always, I'm really open to your comments and questions below. I'm taking a look to see if I can find any uh, comments and questions from those who are joining live here. So feel free to add a comment below. And uh, I want to thank um, Richard and Lisa for joining me and Kristen as well. Um, you know, Kristen says this feels similar to what I learned through a natural disaster. So yeah, sometimes the hardest experiences, um, if we're, uh, especially once we get some distance to, to it and look at it, look, look back at it, we can try to extract the blessings from it, try to extract the gifts. So thank you. All right. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm George Cow. Uh, I love talking about how do you build a business like this way from a more authentic and deeper place that naturally results in, in a better business. So, all right, be well. I'll see you in the next video. Take care.